Hello friends, it's Mel from Melody Crochet. Thank you for stopping by for another fast, easy, super simple crochet tutorial. Today we are going to be making this slouchy beanie that will fit an adult. I'd say a medium to large size woman's head, small to medium size men's head, easy to adjust if you just want to go up or down a hook size for a slightly smaller or slightly larger hat. But we are going to be using a size 4 worsted weight or Aran weight yarn. This one is Simply Soft with Shimmer. I'll talk on the podcast about how in love I am with this yarn, but I will say I'm in love with this yarn. There's going to be more of this in my life. I'm excited about it. But size 4 worsted weight yarn, one ball will do you. I had lots left over from mine. We're going to need an eye hook, scissors, and a needle to cut and weave in the ends, and a measuring tape. A lot of people wanted a tutorial to make my other hats into slouchy beanies, but not really possible because it's a whole different animal. A regular hat would be on top of your head, gravity would keep it on, your face would be down here smiling at me, hello, but for a slouchy beanie, your face is up here looking this way. So this is kind of hanging up the back of your head. Gravity's working against it, especially if you put hair in there. So we need a bit more of a structured band and a little bit more shaping even down to here. But it's super fast, super easy, and the best gift to give. Everybody on your list will love a slouchy beanie. I guarantee it. So let's get going, shall we? I'm going to be using, Jean, this is Red Heart Soft in, oh, I always forget this. Is it Dark Bark? Mm -mm. Dark Leaf. And it is a size 4 medium, ma medium weight worsted yarn that suggests an eye hook. So perfect for our project. So here's the tail hanging off my hand. I'm pinching the yarn right here. Boop, boop. The ball of yarn is at the other end of this side. Go ahead, open up that pinky, go over, under, over. Grab it with your pinky. Structure. I'm going to be working on this side of the X. You're going to go under, grab that yarn, pull, and twist to lock it into place. Now, this is the yarn that's connected to the ball. Get on under there and chain one. Now the work is done. Chain two. Heck, chain three. Lock that puppy into place. Turn your hand around so your fingers are facing you and give it a pinch so you can take your fingers out. There it is. There's our magic circle waiting to be worked into. If you need it off of your hand, just pinch at that base right there where everything's happening. However it's comfortable to hold this while keeping the tension, let's do 12 double crochets right inside and over the tail at the same time. So I like to go over the double width. If you haven't done a double crochet before, it's yarn over, insert, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull under two, yarn over, pull under two. And that is the second of 12 double crochets for this row. I'm going to go nice and slow for this row. I know it really helps to see. Even though I think everyone does this differently. If you're new, your double crochets might not look structured, regular, the same, however you want to call it, but that's okay. It comes with time. You can just make dishcloths over and over again to get your stitches uniform, or you can make hats and wear them. It's all good. Now I pulled that tight by the tail, but I didn't really ring it until we get maybe two or three rows established in this circle, I'm not going to pull that tight. I just kind of drew it closed. 
find the top of your first double crochet, not the chains, the double crochet, and insert your hook. Grab that working yarn, make sure you don't have the tail, and draw through everything that's going to form your circle. Chain two, which we do not count as a stitch, yarn over, and in the very first stitch, so not with the hook, but right on top of that first double crochet, you are going to do two double crochets. Right in the one stitch. That way we can get more stitches in this row than we had in the last. As a matter of fact, we're going to do two in every stitch across. Yarn over, pull up a loop, draw under two strands, and draw under two strands. And continue across with two stitches in each stitch. Now I'm going to count, make sure I'm at 24. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. So we're in good shape. I highly suggest for the first couple of rows you count also. After that, you can kind of loosen your rein on the number, but the first ones are so formative. Now we are going to slip stitch onto the top of that first double crochet in the row. Boop! Once again, chain two. So now we're going to yarn over and we're going to do a crochet, double crochet all by itself in that stitch. But the next one gets an increase, so two double crochets. And we'll be forming that as a pattern all the way around. So every other stitch will have one double crochet in it and the one after it will have two double crochets in it. At the end of this row, since it was 24, you will end up with 36 stitches. So continue across one double crochet in one stitch and then two in the next and I will meet you at the end of this row. Alrighty, coming to the end of this third row and we're going to do the last double crochet by itself and the very last stitch will have two double crochets in it. You can count across if you'd like. It should be 36 stitches. And you might notice it looks a little bit open. That's normal. That's that chain space right there. Totally normal. And then to get rid of it, we're going to go and we're going to find the top of that first double crochet. That's not it. That's it right there. We're going to slip the stitch into the top of it. And that kind of makes it go away. Gapless so your head doesn't get cold. Chain two, get a little height. And we are going to have the pattern of one, whoops, double crochet, followed by one double crochet. And the stitch after that will have two double crochets. And again, one, one double crochet, and an increased double crochet all the way across. Go ahead and do that all the way across and I will meet you at the other side. Here we are at the end. We're just going to slip stitch right into the top of that first double crochet. And now we have a bit of a shaping row. That's what I call them when I just double crochet one time in each row across so that we can get this a little bit more elongated and a little less flat circle. Because if you look at it on the table, it's just a flat circle, but we want it to come up a bit. What that's going to look like is double crocheting on top of the first double crochet of your row, boop, and into the next, and all the way across. I am back at the end of that shaping round of row five. We can go ahead and yank this. Since we've established that circle, we can yank it a little bit more. We're going to slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet. 
I have 48 stitches around and now I'm going to pick up on my increases where I last left off which means I'm going to do a double crochet all by themselves three times one two three and then two double crochets in the same stitch and that's our pattern all the way across so double crochet double crochet double crochet and increase double crochet Go ahead and repeat that all the way across and I will see you at the end of this row. We've come to the end of this row. We have one more increase row and then it's going to get very, very simple. Slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet of this row. Chain two. Now we are going to double crochet four stitches all by themselves. There's two and three and four then we increase so two double crochets in the same stitch and we're going to repeat that all the way across one and then another a third and a fourth all by themselves and then an increased double crochet so two double crochets in the same stitch and go ahead and repeat that all the way around. And I have finished my last increase row. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, row seven. We're going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet of the row. Boop. Chain two. And now you are going to double crochet one time in each stitch around. There's 72 stitches around at this point. Now you're going to mark this stitch if you'd like, but basically 10 rows evenly around, or about five to six inches. If you'd like it slouchier, keep on going. I personally don't like it too slouchy, but if you want it slouchier, this is the point where you just keep on going for length but mine I'm going to go for five inches, 10 rows, and then I'm going to start my brand stitch in each row. I'm sorry, one stitch in each stitch across. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet of the row and start another row just like that 10 times. So after I have double crocheted my length, 10 rows, 5 inches. I'm going to meet you back here. See you then. Okay, I am back. I even did one extra row because it wasn't measuring quite long enough. Just to go, even though I went just a little bit over, I figured it's better to be a little too slouchy. Am I right? So, this is what I'm left with. And now we are going to start the brim. Chain one, and we are going to single crochet all the way around. 72 single crochets. Now if you have not single crocheted, that is no yarn over, just insert, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull under everything on the hook. It's the easiest stitch, I think. Now the reason we are going to this, might as well chit chat since we are doing an easy stitch all the way around. The reason we're doing this is because there's a little bit more stability in the single crochet. It's a little less stretchy and it will shrink down your work just a bit. I'm still on the same size hook, the eye hook, five and a half millimeter, but going to the single crochet, even with the same hook size and the same yarn, will draw in your fabric just a little bit. Alrighty, so I've gone all the way around with a single crochet and instead of doing the slip stitch chain one, I'm going to work in a spiral. Do a single crochet 
but you're not going to do it like you normally would like that and with two strands you are going to go into the middle of that V see how the stitch forms a V you're going in and toward the back so in and toward the back drop a loop and finish that single crochet you're going to do that until you are eight stitches from the end of this row. And then we're going to do a little decrease. Right there, you can see that line is forming. So we have these stitches left and we're going to do some decreasing. Now, in order to decrease, I'm not going to decrease through the back loops only. You're going to insert, draw up a loop, insert into the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull under everything on the hook. And that is a single crochet decrease. Now, back to your back loops only. One, two, and go ahead and do that again. So regular single crochet decrease. So insert, draw up a loop, insert, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through everything on the hook. Now two more single crochet back loop and you're going to start overlapping and that's okay. We're at the end of the row, make it a decrease. Draw up a loop, draw up a loop from the next stitch, yarn over and pull under everything. Remember we're working in a spiral so we don't have to do anything there. Now you're going to go for two more stitches, back loops only. We're now back loopsing in a back loops, which is actually easier, I think. There was two. Now we need to decrease again. So insert, draw up a loop, insert, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull under everything. Two more stitches through the back loops, one single crochet back loop, another single crochet in the back loop. Drop a loop, drop a loop in the next stitch, yarn over, pull under everything. Now continue on through the back loops until you hit your first decrease. I'll see you at the end of this row on the stitch right before your decrease. I'm right on top of my first decrease. So I'm going to decrease again. Then you're going to do one back loop stitch and then decrease again. Followed by one back loop stitch. Come here, mister. There you go. I might have split that. <laughs> and decrease a third time. Back loop stitch. Decrease a fourth time. back loop stitch and decrease a final time for the entire hot. That was just a little tuck that's going to make this pull in right under your hair and make it wear a lot better. So from there you continue on your epic journey of the back loop stitch right over every stitch even the decreased ones until this area of the brim measures seven rows long. So Yay! Oh my goodness, that is work, am I right? Whew. Okay, I've ended my seventh row. It is truly just, can we take a moment just to admire that brim? Oh my gosh, I love that. That just makes me so happy. But back to work. So what we're going to do is fasten off. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, draw up a loop, pull that loop through everything on the hook, yarn over and pull through 
that loop and you have completed your facet off, you will need to cut. You take your loop after you cut the yarn and you just pull it through. Now you're off the hook. <laughs> and you're going to thread that yarn. Kind of do a zigzag. Don't want to be predictable. Go in and under a few single stitches. And then over a bit. and back. You can snip relatively close to this because you went through back and forth so many times. Now flip it inside out. Pull that magic circle tight. And for this, I like to follow the pucker, but not all the way through. I go under a few, then I don't go under a couple, then I go under a few. You do that about three times. Then I go the opposite direction. So we've gone forward, we've gone back. Sometimes I'll go through the center just to keep that closed. Boop. Maybe again. And now we are complete. Go ahead and snip that. I give this one an inch. I would love to see what you make over on Instagram. I'm Melody Crochet. So just at Melody Crochet inside your post will get it in front of me. I'd love to see. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, those are warmly welcome down below. If you have anything that you'd like to see me make in the future, please leave that in the comment also. I would love to once again see what you've made, so let me, if you could tag me over at Melody Crochet on Instagram, that would be fabulous. And the printable pattern along with many, many others are on my blog, MelodyCrochet.com. See you tomorrow.